come here versus when the agenda item does come because you'll have all of these thoughts in your minds when you make the final decision, which could be a month or two or three months down the road or possibly longer. So the things I would like to first uh, explain, because I, I, I know we've heard a lot about Nestle today, and I hear a lot about Nestle wherever I am out in the world. And that's because it's very difficult to separate Seven Springs Water Company from Nestle. That's because they've already contracted with Nestle to procure this water. Seven Springs is a company that procures water. It's not a bottling company. So when it went into the permit 20 years ago, it said, hey, I'm going to bottle water. This is what we're going to do with the water. And then over the course of 20 years, it's been purveying it for other companies to buy it from them. So the fact that you have to have, listen to the background on Nestle being a multinational corporation, that's just part of the process because they are already together. They are already contracted. They are already part of the same unit, even though Seven Springs is the one that you're going to eventually have to decide upon as, as safety goes. So, uh, water permit issued in 1999. You've heard a lot about the past 20 years, and that's not just hyperbole. This permit started in 1999. Yes, it came in probably in the 1980s to get the permits to family did. They got the actual permit. And eventually in 1995, it was issued for 4,000,000 some odd gallons of water, and that was pulled back. And then eventually it was settled on 1,152,000 gallons of water a day, 20 years ago. I moved here 16 years ago. 17, almost 17. I moved here. I wish I'd been here three years before. <laughs> I've been standing in front of you trying to stop that permit from being issued. But as it turns out, we helped uh, organize with uh, all of our neighbors and all of the people in the Santa Fe River. We organized our Santa Fe River and we were able to stop four water bottling permits in our basin, in our area on the Santa Fe River. So we have a track record of doing this. This isn't our first rodeo. We've been through this process before on many different levels on local government levels, that's how I got to know all the local governments, uh, Gilchrist County, and Columbia County, and Alachua County, and Swanee County, and all the other counties. And that's how I got to know all the city people, too, and that's how I got to know you. Because we found out then, through Jerry Scarborough and uh, um, um, Cal Farmer, I can't think of his name right now, <coughs> that was the chair. No. Nope. Before them over here now. Anyway, we found out from these uh, folks that, you know, if, yeah, Shire, yeah, thank you. Shire, Blue Shire. Shire. If you want to do something, you've got to change the laws. Well, here we are. Here we are, Florida statutes. I have learned about Florida statutes. Guess what? Laws have changed. Changed tremendously from when I started 16, 17 years ago in this process. Today, and we had some of these then, but today we have uh, Florida statutes provides protection interpreted, interpreted by the DEP and the water management districts as a certain allowable harm. It's not protection, that's allowing for harm. That's one reason I got involved with the nature rights movement because we want nature protected to allow no harm. But instead our laws are written to allow for harm. 